Good folks of YouTube, welcome back to the channel. My apologies, it's been a long time since I posted a video. Uh, and that's for kind of two reasons. Uh, number one, I haven't gotten any new gear in a while. So I haven't had anything to kind of review and share with you. Uh, I've just been playing guitar and being a dad. Uh, I play guitar in a worship team. That's become you know my new passion and I, I love it. And I've just been really kind of fully focused on that. And like I said, being a dad and being a husband. Uh, but I hope this video finds you and finds you well. Uh, I've been thinking about doing a video for a while. I was like, oh, I need to do some new content. And I did a video a couple, maybe about a year ago, about the pros and cons of building a parts caster. And uh, I had a parts telly in there, and that's this guitar right here. And I got a bunch of questions about it. So I thought, hey, I'll just do a short video kind of sharing you what I did to this guitar and the story of this guitar. You heard a little bit of that in the beginning there. Um, but I'll tell you, this guitar has had a 13 year story. It started its life as a Squire Affinity Telecaster in 2009, uh, a guitar that my wife had bought me um, because I'd broken my leg and I needed something to do. So she, so she bought me an inexpensive guitar. She knew I liked to tinker. So she bought it and said, she goes, make something cool out of it. So immediately I did. First thing I did was replace the neck. Uh, I put a different neck on there, a rosewood, a rosewood fingerboard neck, uh, his actual real fender neck on there. I made it a string through. Now the, the Squires back in the day, the Affinity series wasn't string through body and now this one is, as you can see. Uh, I put some new pickups in it and a uh, new wiring harness and obviously a new bridge. And I played it like that and that looked like this. I played it like that for a while, uh, a good couple years. I mean, and it was a cool guitar, it, it was great, but I, I hit a snag uh, financially where I needed to sell some gear and I wound up selling it. But luckily the guy I sold it to became a good friend of mine. And uh, a couple years down the line, I, 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 uh, I remember talking to him about it. And I was like, if you ever wanna get rid of that guitar, let me know, I'll buy it back from you. Um, and luckily he did at one point and we actually you know did a trade of some other gear and I got it back and then immediately gutted it, completely gutted it because uh, I loved the neck on there and I kind of made a more vintage -y kind of a uh, surf green telly out of that one and I played that one for a while, recently sold it <laughs> like a bonehead. But this body just sat there and then just before COVID hit, I decided to build something out of it and that's the guitar you saw in the parts caster video. It had a aftermarket, no name, uh, blemish neck I found on Amazon for like 40 bucks. Uh, and it had a lot of issues and I had to fix them. And it worked, but it was super thin. And it actually, you know, color wise and all that, it, it really matched with the body, but it just was not a great neck. So I wound up taking that neck off. Um, I put some BYO hard vintage pickups, I think they were called. Um, BYOGuitar.com, uh, which I've always been a fan. And I put those pickups in there with an Emerson wiring harness. And I played it like that for a while, but again, it just wasn't, it wasn't inspiring me. Um, and then I put this neck on here. This is an all parts neck that I found on Reverb, a guy who, who takes the unfinished all parts necks and finishes them. And it's been finished in a nitro finish with a, you know, kind of aged nitro. And it's been relict. You can see it's got a wear, so all the all, all the back of the neck has been lightly sanded off, so it feels really good, and it's got that really worn-in look, and it feels like it, and it's a big old fat. It's the fat vintage neck 
that they offer. But it's like a, it's kind of a vintage with a modern takes because it's a, instead of a seven and a quarter board, it's a nine and a half radius board. Uh, but like a vintage neck, uh, the truss rod adjustments down at the heel. And put that neck on and it was, you know, it's getting there, pretty good. Vintage style tuners. I have my own logo up there. It says Mish, which is short for my wife, Michelle, which I also have back here, her name right there. And I just do that because, you know, something for me to make it my own. And then this Father's Day, my wife got me some new pickups because she'd been hearing me kind of like, kind of fuss about this guitar. I was like, I love this guitar. I just don't love the sound. I'm not playing it. And I feel bad that I'm not playing it. So she got me some of my favorite pickups for Father's Day, her, my wife, and my daughter. This, and they're not expensive. These are, they're Fender pickups, but they're probably one of the least expensive Fender pickups. And these are the Fender Tex-Mex. I love the Tex-Mex pickups. These pickups just rule. Some people don't like them. Some people love them. I love them. They sound good. They're a little bit hotter, um, but still clear and all that stuff. And I, I put those in there and then spent the last two weeks like really dialing this guitar in because I was like, if they sounds good, I need to I need to really make this like perfect. So I did a couple things to it the last two weeks. It had a, a one the old school round string tree here, but I, I was getting that pinging sound, so I decided to put two string trees, old school. I know that's kind of weird for Telly, but I it just I think because the neck is so big, it just the angle wasn't breaking off right, so I had to do that, and now it plays amazing. Um, and I really set it up. There's a couple screws down here. I don't know if you can see that they're. A couple of them don't match in the bridge here. There's two because they're longer because I needed the intonation to go up there. So I, I put those in there and got it set up and like playing really good. You heard there at the beginning. Um, it's just a great telly now. Um, so that's this story of this guitar. Now, is it finished? I would like to think it's finished, but I'm not gonna say it's finished because I'm a tinker. I'm always wanting to do stuff. I think if I'm going to do anything else to this guitar is I, I think I want to put a vintage three saddle bridge on there. Um, now that's going to come with some drawbacks because this is a, a longer modern bridge. If I put a three saddle, you're going to see three holes behind there. Um, but it, it, and it will have to be a top loader because the strings through won't match the route, which is fine because top loading tallies are cool, they're a little slinkier. So I think I've been thinking about trying that anyway. Um, so I'm debating. Comment below. Do you think I should put the vintage saddle bridge? It'll have those three holes, but it'll be kind of the guitar's story, part of the guitar's story. You know, as I said, this guitar is 13 years old. What's left of the Squire, which is just the body, is 13 years old, and it has a great story. Um, so comment below. Do you think I should put the vintage three saddle bridge in there? And the good part is if I do and don't like it, I can just put this one back. But, yeah, comment. Do you think I should? So, anyway, thank y'all for watching. Uh, I'm going to do better to try to post a little bit more, at least once a month. Um, please comment below what you think I should do here, uh, whether or not I should put the vintage or keep it as is. Um, comment, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. I appreciate you guys, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye.